Hey, Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth, and this video is a little bit different. We're actually going to be sharing this with customers as well as to the public. Uh, see, we're a financial advisory firm. We teach our customers along the way, and one of the ways we do that is by posting videos in what we call the dojo. It's a private video library, and I get a lot of questions. People go, what's going on behind the scenes, man? What are you working on? And I thought I would just bring you guys today uh, some of the information that we sort of share with our customers in a relevant and timely way as it pertains to uh, earnings and the stock market right now. So if you don't mind, I'm going to breeze through it so our customers don't have to watch a lot of sales pitch and you don't have to watch that as well. Keep us in mind at Jazz Wealth if you find this interesting or if we scare you away and you need help uh, with some of this, hey, you can always schedule a call and we'll chat with you. Well, anyways, if you're watching this now, the markets are higher by about 15 and a half percent. Now, we always ask the question here, when someone gives you a stat, is it relevant or not? Meaning, does it make any sense? Is there any sort of thing to go by on it? If someone says the markets are higher by 15 and a half percent, does that matter? Is it good? Is it lower than average? Higher than average? Is, where are we at with that? So we're always asking that question. And I want to share with you that the uh, market is higher by 15 and a half percent. And that is in the first 70 days of the year, right? We're, we're just getting started, right? The year's very young. Now, as far as the 15.5% goes, that is actually the fifth best gain within the first 70 days on record, meaning the markets in 1987 gained 22.5%, and uh, in 1990, uh, what was it, 1930, they gained 19.3%. You got three, four, and the fifth best performance is this year with the S&P 500 up about 15.5%. That says a lot, right? The S&P is having its best perform, the fifth best performance in history. Uh, that should say something. Well, for us, it makes us want to study that. What is that good? Is that bad? What's going on from there? So what we did is we put this list together and we said, how often has the S&P started the first 70 days with a gain of at least 10%. Let's make it serious. Like, let's see a good move in the beginning of the year. Well, in fact, there are a total of 13 times that this has happened in history. So it's really rare sort of event, right? You go back all the way to 1928, and you can only find 13 years where the markets have gained at least 10% in the first 70 days. So I uh, thought that was pretty interesting. Of these 13, 11 of them finished positive, or I'm sorry, 12 of them finished positive for the rest of the year. So you go, okay, that's interesting, right? Because we have this unique start to the markets, and I'm finding out now that, well, it comes out to be 92.3% of them, or 12 out of 13, right? We're actually positive at the end of the year. There's only one time in history where the market started with a gain of over 10% in that first quarter in a week and a half and uh, finished negative. And you know when that was? It was this year, right here, 1930. Started with almost a 20% gain in the first 70 days. And then all of a sudden we tanked. Why? 1930, Great Depression, right? If you study the markets, we tanked, man. The markets actually fell 28% that year, meaning they gave back all of the 19, then fell almost another 30. So a disaster of a year there for uh, the markets, right? Uh, 1987, which was the first, the biggest gaining, uh, the best performing start to the year, that also did give back almost all of its gains, finishing up about 2% on the year. Here's what you want to know. When markets are really strong, so the data, the first 70 days, when the markets are uh, positive by more than 10% in the first 70 days, the average gain for the rest of the year is actually only 2.5%. What does that tell you? All the action happened already, right? Statistically speaking, all of the action has happened already in the stock market. There's only another 2.5% on average to gain. Uh, seven, oh, let's call it 8% as a median gain if you were to go back and study those 13 days or 13 years. So what does that tell you? That tells you that we've gained a lot. We could expect some volatility, right? The markets have a chance to wiggle around quite a bit because if the average gains only two and a half percent, what happened all those years? What was going on? We had profit taking. We had obviously a great depression. <laughs> we had some weakness. And then we had plenty of years where actually the bottom 60% uh, of all of those years, 
uh, the, still had a gain of double digits on the year, meaning they started with a 10% gain, they finished with at least a 10% gain. However, it was very quiet. So when you look at the markets and you go, okay, well, what, what should I be expecting here? Is this something where we're going to see strength through the rest of the year? Probably not. You actually could probably expect to see very modest 2.5%, 3% gains if you're going by the average. Now, what could ruin this? What could totally ruin our little earning or our um, market rally here that we have that I've just kind of gone over? Well, the answer is earnings. <laughs> we got earnings season starting here. And uh, if you're not familiar with that, it just means that all of the companies that are publicly traded will take the opportunity to report how they did in the prior quarter. So our earnings coming up, every company is going to report for the first quarter of 2019. This is our first look at how companies are actually performing this year. Now, uh, it's not expected to be good, by the way. We're expected to see earnings growth of only 4.3% on average. Let me explain this for a second, because now we're just throwing numbers out. You know, it's important that you know what it means. For earnings, most people focus on the S&P 500. We want to know the, those 505 companies, how are they reporting earnings, good or bad? What we do is we take an average of all those results, which is not fair. It's not like it's weighted in any special way. It's, it, I wish it wasn't done that way. But what we do is we take an average and we say, what was the average earnings growth increase or decrease? And what happened here is uh, all the analysts have said, we don't think these companies are going to have earnings growth as much. They brought the bar down to 4.3% earnings growth. So when you hear on TV, the company say they reported earnings of X. That's what that means. The earnings growth of 4.3%. Still positive, not negative in any way. So nothing to worry about there. Revenue is also something that's focused on. And we're expecting that to come in at 5%. That's also lower than most people are, uh, would like to see, right? So expect to see revenue growth around 5%, at least that's what the analysts are thinking. You can certainly assume that there'll be better or worse. So earnings, how could that ruin this stock market rally, right? What's the, what's the catch here? What are we, why would we have done so well, have all the statistical odds on our side, but actually get crushed on earnings? Well, here's what it's called. It's called beat the street by just one penny. And that's really the way, it, that, that's how we say it. So a company may uh, be expected to earn uh, say 60 cents per share, right? You may see something like that. Oh, so-and-so made 60 cents per share. They may have, uh, and they call it, this is EPS. You usually see the short term there. They may have also made 59 cents in the prior quarter for whatever reason, okay? You could blame it on the season. You could, it could be whatever reason the company made 59. Wall Street is expecting them now to make some number. So they're, in this case, they're expecting to make 60 cents a share or 60 cents of earnings for every share that's available, right? Um, so that's that one. They made 59 cents prior, and now Wall Street's gonna say, uh, okay, what do you got? What did you actually do? And as long as the company reports earnings of 61 cents per share, then they beat the street by just one penny, meaning Wall Street expected 60, they beat by one penny. If that happens, you tend to see a spike. In fact, last earnings uh, season for the, the holiday season, the earnings quarter, last earnings season, stocks that beat on earnings, you can go back and track this if you like, but stocks that beat on earnings averaged a 1.01% gain the next day. The very next day, like the market's open, the market's closed, boom, average gain for a stock that beat on earnings was 1.01%. Uh, 1 and that's what's called an EP, oh, EPS beat, all right? So it was rather good performance, right? Now, stocks that missed, <laughs> they didn't do so well. Stocks that missed on earnings uh, gapped lower by an average of 6%. Now, a gap just means the stock is trading day by day, all is looking good, and then for some reason, it does this. You ever see that on a chart? You see the stock just wiggling around doing whatever, and then there's this massive gap in price. You go, whoa, what happened? The stock just fell 6% out of nowhere. I went to bed, the market closed, I woke up, the market opened, and my stock was down 6%. Uh, in this case, if it was last quarter, it means they missed on earnings. So stocks last quarter got crushed, right? You know why? 
not to like beat a dead horse here. I mean, you don't have to like keep following if you're not interested, but uh, the reason why was because Wall Street lowered the bar. We lowered the bar so low, we made it so easy for a company. It's like going to school and all of a sudden the teacher's like, look, you can have the first five answers. Okay, you can have the first 10 answers. You can have the first 20 answers. Look, if you just write your name, I'll give you five points. That's what Wall Street did. They said, we're gonna give everybody a break. All you have to do is beat these really low numbers. And if you couldn't beat these really low numbers, you got crushed <laughs> by an average of 6%, the stock would fall, okay? So something to think about there. Now, here's the reason why this could uh, sort of mess up our uh, rally that we have going on here in the markets. Number one, beating the street by just one penny. The bar has been load, lowered. It's not that hard to beat on earnings right now. It's not good if you can't beat the new lowered expectations, okay? The second reason is stocks for the most part had the best returns last quarter from the earnings reports. Let me, I didn't say that clearly. I could tell I didn't say that clearly. Okay, so last earnings season, you had, uh, for example, if you were to follow uh, the tech stocks, let's take tech stocks, for example. In the S&P 500, if you say, man, I love me some tech stocks, my CRM, my Salesforce, my Amazon, my Google, and things like that. Last earnings season, these guys did so well on earnings that the, the group, together as a whole, gained 10.8%. Again, what have you learned already so far? If you're not one of our customers, you already know what to say right here, right? You know to say, well, Dustin, 10.8% in the tech sector after reporting earnings, so last quarter, um, is that an interesting number or not? Why are you telling me 10.8%? Is it a high number? Is it a low number? In fact, it's the highest number in 10 years right? You got to go back to the second quarter of 2009 to see returns that are that good. That's a 10 year record that just happened, right? You all participated. If you're invested, you, you all participated and were a part of that, okay? Industrials, they were the best performing sector. I wrote it down. They were at 12%. Same thing, best performance from that category since 2009. What does that tell you? We have a very, very important earnings season coming up here where stocks have a very low threshold to beat. And if they can't beat that, everybody's going to see, well, look at all this great growth we've already had. I guess I'll take my profits. I better get out of the market. The economy must be slowing. So you really have an opportunity this year, this very earnings season to second quarter or first quarter earnings season you actually have an opportunity to see extreme volatility in the markets. Now, I'm not trying to scare you because we know from the beginning of this video, the stats are on your side, right? Markets that start with a gain of over 10% in the first 70 days tend to finish the year uh, every time but once with a gain of at least 10%. That doesn't mean we can't see some volatility in the way, meaning large fluctuations in your account. So. I will wrap it up with that. If this were a live class, by the way, and I was doing this every Thursday for our customers, this would be the time I would stick around as long as people needed to answer their questions. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a quick insight into some of the data. It may be more data than you ever wanted to know, and that's okay. Some of our classes for our customers are rather intense and offer a lot of data or studies. We just like to, we don't golf, we like to study. <laughs> so other advisors invest your money and go golfing or on vacation. We invest your money and then we want to know what's going on. When do we need to be ready to warn you about something, to get you excited about something, or just bring it to your attention so that you may have a better understanding of how the markets move. Uh, so some of our classes are also very basic as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. If you are a public viewer and happen to be watching this, let me know in the comments below. Is this something interesting to you? Uh, do you find it interesting that we offer this to our customers or was I way off base and this data is really not that important to you? Either way, let me know what you think down below. Uh, if you're thinking about joining us here at Jazz Wealth, there are tons of other videos just hiding in the dojo ready for you there. I hope you will uh, certainly keep us in mind. Uh, that's all I have for you. Enjoy the rest of your day and uh, we'll talk to you soon.